What else? What other purely water animal are you guys thinking? Something that's fast. We could go with Kraken. with uh, manatee or, or whatever. I think I'd have to look that up because I don't know what it looks like. No, manatee is look dumb. We don't want to yeah, do what about, what about like an octopus? It could wrap you up or something. <laughs> And scream go black. Something okay. like that? Um, yeah, yeah, octopus? Yeah. Okay. Oh, but octo octo octopi? Yeah. Maybe in special circumstances they can crawl onto land? Is sure. Or we could have like we could have like a like a boss, like an underwater <coughs> like boss animal or something, so you have to get past somehow. Yeah. It's gonna be really hard to incorporate bosses and stuff like this. I mean no violence in this game, but that's okay, that's the challenge. Alright, I'm gonna put octopi on, put water. I'm just gonna put water. Cool. Someone's suggesting a toucan? That's a bird. <laughs> yeah, we could have something like that though, maybe? Something, yeah. uh... Land enemies. A toucan, yeah, like a toucan flying around, maybe they will, uh... Grab you. Maybe in certain spots you'll have to hide from aer aerial view, and then toucans will fly around. We'll put that for now. I'll just put air. Your, um, control like your little <coughs> robot guy. You gotta avoid. Yeah, that'd be cool, right? You gotta control that guy around, make sure he doesn't get eaten by a toucan. <laughs> <laughs> toucan Sam. Yeah. She was pretty good thing. <laughs> okay, we might be, uh, might get sued for that. We have a toucan named Sam, he shoots fruit loops. We'll probably get in trouble. Okay. I know it's just water bad guys, but just, 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 we'll, we'll put this underlined in, in black, or circled in black. We know, it's, we know it's exclusive from what we're talking about here. Okay. Um, all right, anything else you guys think we should have for our, our water bad guys floating around? They can catch us in water no matter how fast we try to swim, but they can't really come on land, and if they do, we can outrun them. Sure. Sounds good? Yeah. Okay, we have a, sort of a nice theme for them. How about like they can put obstacles in their way too? Like especially the octopuses with their arms. What do you mean? Like if you're trying to get across water, Maybe like you're jumping on like boxers or something. Maybe they're like pulling out. Oh, that'd be cool. Or they can they can reach out of out of the water. You mean? Mm -hmm. Okay, I like that. Uh, just gonna put a little arrow here for the octopus. Can reach out of water. Uh, limited though, no, but limited because it's only very limited as to what it can do. Okay, I like that. That'd be good. Jump from a box as you get gripped down in there. Could there ah. be like zones where you're only gonna run into one of the kind, or like, is it gonna be like random? Like you might see a walrus and an octopus at the same time. Probably right, we should have it so you can see them at the same time. Here's what I'm thinking is, because you know we have our main map, we have our main little water area that we're gonna have to get from, and I think just in there there should be, because we're gonna have swimming. However, we do. We decide to implement that. We'll have it, right? And so, once you're down there, I think that you should see some. You should just see some form of of, of life. I don't want to call it you know life because these are robots, but you know what I mean. Like some form of activity and, and things existing in that underwater world. Like fish. Yeah. Oh, well, you know, or walruses and not the pies. We could make like little fish that just swim around and don't bother you. Yeah, we could like like little ambient critters that don't really matter. Sure. Uh, question: uh, What language will this be programmed in? C sharp, C -sharp. and JavaScript. Yeah. 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 Um, okay. You guys all good then? All right. On that note, let's uh, let's hop into some C sharp. You guys, you guys good with that? Cool. All right. All right. Let's do it. Yeah. Okay, switching gears a little bit, let's hop into Unity. So we were, I was messing around with a character controller, and I wrote just this quick little ray casting script that allows us to sort of interact with objects. Here, let's make this full screen so we can kind of see a little bit better. So now I'm gonna walk around right, you guys don't remember a character controller, and we got this mouse orbiting script. Now if you notice down here, in this little box, I have a debug statement that just tells us what we're hitting. So right now, and it's just telling us what this thing is hovering over, right? More or less, what it's hovering over within within a certain distance. So if I hover over this box, it's not, it doesn't realize I'm over this box until I get closer. But then once I do go to this box, 
I attach a little particle effect to it to enable that particle effect once once we hover over something, right? And then if we go away, it's going to go away, so on and so forth. So that's more or less how we're going to be interacting. I would assume in this game. I was thinking we'd also we one thing we'd also do though is we could have a raycast based off of our character and where our character is facing, and then we could get rid of this little cursor thing in the middle, right? And then just imagine it. You know, we could still rotate and everything. But then maybe our raycast would just be based off of where our guy is facing, right? So here he would be interactable, right? But here he would not be interactable. That's what I'm saying. So there's we could do it a, a couple of different ways, right? And or maybe even both, right? Maybe we could have a raycast based off our guy too. So if he's faced, you know, like that, it's still gonna pick it up. Because one thing that this is doing, this um, what is actually happening is we have this raycast that's attached to our camera, and it's pointing into the middle of our camera screen, which just so happens to be where this dot is also placed. But one thing that is happening is if I go in the middle here, it thinks, thinks that I'm interacting with this box when I'm obviously not facing it really at all. But see see how that's, you can really see it there in that corner. So food for thought. But let's go over the script real quick. I'm going to walk you guys through what I did. Let me open it up here. All right, so this is it. Really short, really simple script. So we have, oh, this can be private. I just made it public for, I was just doing some testing. I'm going to put the script up online too so we can all access it and toy around later and, and use it for raycasting ray references. But so what's happening is we're making this, this, uh, this new object called a ray, which is just more or less the line that will be getting created in this 3D space. <coughs> And then what we're assigning this line to, this ray, is to our camera's main viewport, which is the main screen that our camera is looking at. And then we're using point 0.2 ray, which takes in this, this vector 3 at a certain angle. So point 0.5 and point 0.5, that's halfway of the viewport. That's halfway along the width of the viewport and halfway along the height of the view viewport. So it goes on a scale from 0 to 1. And then I'm not, I didn't mess with our Z at all because I don't... I mean, we could move it, hypothetically, we could move it really far forward so it's about even with our character. Because right now, um, actually here, let me hop back into Unity and I'll show you. There's already a, there's already a major game-breaking bug with it. Right, so if you hover over this box and you, and you enable it, and then you aren't hovering over anything, then it's going to stay enabled. Because in the game's mind is that that's still the current object that's selected. And until it sees that I'm... See, watch the um, watch down here in the bottom left corner. You got the little debug log, right? So see, we hit the little find me. Find me is the box that gets hit. It still it still is thinking that our hitting our hit object is this box until it gets to the length of our terrain, right? And then once we hit our terrain, our box turns off, so on and so forth. And that's only because if you go into the scene view, look at our player, zoom in a little bit. Our camera is the one that's actually using the script and so what's happening is the raycast is happening from here and it's going through the middle of our screen and continuing along so really it's starting almost 30 feet away more than 30 feet away because it's 15 feet up and it's 15 feet back or yards or you know unity measurements so when you think about it it's it's, it's already starting at at 30 feet away from wherever ideally you're placing it at. So you gotta take that into consideration. So that's one thing we could do probably inside of Mono is change our Z value to being a positive number, like maybe maybe not 30 because there's probably certain times we're not actually 30 away. But maybe change it to something like you know, 15 or something. But for now we're just gonna leave it because everything's working as is and it's working good. So that's what's going on there. Then we have this next object that we're instantiating called the raycast hit. This is just for whatever a raycast goes to when it hits a collider. That's what this is for. And this is going to, to contain the data and, and whatever info we're getting from the object that we hit. So then we, um, so this is how you actually are creating it, physics.raycast. And then we pass in the ray that we created, right? Which is a line that's being created from the middle of our screen. And it's going to, and the out.hit is, is what it is hitting. And 
this number is how far you want it to go, right? And so immediately, no matter what it hits, it's going as soon as it hits something, it's going to tell us what it is hitting. And then this debug dot draw array, that's, we don't need that. That's just a debug. As is this print statement just for debugs also. Then so so when we say if our hit dot clear dot tag is a block, then we're going to set our new current object to that. And then that way we can manipulate our current object and we can do things with it if we want to. I mean, this will eventually allow us to add that current object to our build screen and then toy with it in our kind of puzzle like building sequence on how we're going to implement that. And then we access its particle system and we call enable admission and we set that to true. And that's that's how that's how everything happens. I mean that's that's the magic there. We're hovering over it and then we're just setting that particle system to true. And then and then our else statement here is just if our collider is not block, right? And then so the, our only other option at this point is just terrain, because we only have the block and the terrain. So those are our two things that we have. So if it's not block, and we will probably change block to enemy or, or interactable item or, or whatever we want to end up changing it to, then we're going to check real quick to make sure that we have a current object. And if we do, we're going to turn that current object's particle system off, right? We're going to call enable the emission, and we're going to set that to false. And then we're going to set our current object to null, because we don't want to continuously be messing with this current object. Plus, we're going to have a bunch of different objects in the game we're going to be interacting with, so we're going to need to switch out that current object, whatever it is. So just think of it sort of as like a temporary variable that we're just using to store the info about, about whatever we're hitting. So let's hop back into Unity here. And let's just run it. And uh, if you guys have any questions about it, just let me know. I mean, this is kind of the idea. One thing you can tell, right? So it's hitting. OK, come on. We'll go into just the range to where it hits, right? OK, so now it hits. Now if we scroll out, way out. Oh, wait, actually, we're never going to hit the ground. Sorry, I've got to scroll way in until I hit the ground. Now if we scroll out. And then we try to hover over it, right? It's not going to do it. I mean, you guys all get that, right? Because it's based off the camera's distance. Oh, shoot, thank you. Okay, so one thing we were just talking about is, right, if we're zoomed way out, it's not going to hit. But if we zoom in, it'll hit. One thing we could also probably do is we could take the distance between our character and the camera, and we can save that as a variable, and then we can set the distance of our raycast equal to that variable, so it'll always be at the distance that our character is. So no matter what, and do you guys see what I'm saying there? So if the camera is is 15 feet away from our character, if we'll add 15 feet to our raycast, we'll start 15 feet in front of the camera. Or if our character is you know 30 feet in front of our camera, then we'll add 30 feet. It'll add whatever that distance will be. That's sort of how we will manipulate. But do you guys have any questions about it though? It should be, but it's not currently. I mean, ideally, that's what we're going to want to fix and change. Okay. But just for now, I mean, you know, I typed this up in like 20 minutes last period during marketing, so. God, I'm so productive in terms of this club with that class. <laughs> um, yeah, okay, but I mean, so I think that's, that's ultimately the, one of the main changes we're going to need to do with this script specifically is just change that, get that variable, and set it so it'll be dynamic based off where the, how far away the camera is. Yeah. Any questions, any input, anything you guys want to talk about? All right, cool. Well, let's, uh, let's keep planning for our weekend meetup. I remember we said, oh, I got to look at the calendar now, I forgot. Uh, we said the 7th, right? March 7th would be the first one. So let's try to aim for that, right? Aim for March 7th. And let's, um, if you guys can't make it, let me know like as soon as possible. That way, if a bunch of people can't make it, we'll just reschedule it for another time. Yeah. Uh, when, where, do you know? Yeah. In the computer lab from, uh, let's just say noon to noon. What computer lab? Dugan or Science? Uh, do we know? Do you know? You I think that's a computer lab, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, it'd be ideally it'd be great if we could get some computers and install streaming software on them. And like I said, I want to, I want to have 
multiple stream stations set up so people who want to just see what's happening in Unity can watch the Unity stream. People want to see just what's happening in the programming can watch the programming stream. And people that just want to watch the art stream can watch the art stream. Maybe even have two for art stream. Maybe have one text stream and one modeling. Or maybe like one animating or you know, whatever. But I, I think it'd be great to have options for, for anyone viewing at home to be able to switch through and then provide feedback that way also. Yeah. So stay tuned. I'll keep you guys posted on that about what when and exactly where, but for now let's tentatively plan. If you hear nothing, assume that it's happening okay. at noon in Psy 106, okay. 24 hour game jam. They're getting it done. Okay. Obviously, you guys have to stay for 24 hours, but if you want, by all means, I'll be there. I'll be there for 24 hours, powering through, streaming, 24 hour live stream. You guys tune in, and it'll be fun. All right, uh, on that note, uh, let's call it for the week, and we'll see everybody back here on Monday. As always, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to email me at swirlyman at gmail.com or just send me a comment on the Twitch or leave me a comment on the YouTube video, however you guys are viewing it. And awesome, remember to like and subscribe and we'll see you guys next week.